Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight, from the East Coast of the United States of America, here in New York, New York, the city so nice they named it twice, and it's time for us to check in as we do once a week with someone that I guess we don't put on the rest of the show because he's so special. Yeah. Wait a minute, I got to get rid of this up here in the top of the page. There, there we go. How are you? That's Phil All Meyer. Right. It says his name right there. I don't even have to say that's Phil Meyer. Phil. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about uh, heading down to the uh, border for uh, the Texas border for a vacation. You know, uh, it's pretty exclusive. You don't uh, you don't get your picture taken. Uh, you know, it's it sounds like a good is, place is to that, go. Is that your your put down of, of poor people who are trying to make it to this country because they're looking for freedom? Well, no, it's such a it's such a comfortable place, you know. They're yeah, they're but these going people the these people are looking for freedom, Phil. Freedom, yeah. The four year olds they're looking for freedom. Well, but, also there are some seventeen and sixteen year olds as well, and there are their parents who would also like to get uh, that freedom as well because they're fleeing Guatemala. Most of them it's from coming yeah. from Guatemala well, they, because there's they, something horrible happening down there. Well, I guess uh, it, it's not as horrible as what the coyotes do to them and the human trafficking and all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, how was your weekend? <laughs> well, but what, what, what point are you trying to make in all of that? You know, we could actually make it easier for them and give the coyotes nothing to make money off of. You know, we how, could stop that could, ourselves. Oh, you mean just open up the borders and that's let them right walk. that's right if they didn't open open up the borders to your relatives phil you wouldn't be here they did but my relatives had to take medical tests when they got here no, they had no, to no, uh they had no, to go through no, no, uh, ellis no, island wrong not everybody went through ellis island and if they were sick if they had they, enough money they didn't have to go through ellis island who had enough money a, a lot of people had enough money. There were two two loads of people. They dropped the first load off uh, on in Manhattan, and they got off the boat and went wherever they were going to go, and then the rest were taken to Ellis Island, uh, and they were made to wait for... I think usually the average wait was only about a day. Uh, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, they had to, uh, you know, they had to pr prove all kinds of things that they didn't have to do if they had enough money and could be let off in Manhattan. Yeah. So it's OK you, for you to have a passport to show that you can go into a restaurant, but you can walk right into the country, uh, you know, uh, f uh, free and easy. Well, I don't know that that's uh, you're trying to compare one thing to another, and I don't think they equate with each other. Well, you know, if, uh, you know, if you're, 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 you're driving certain people who are listening to us right now, stark raving mad, they're pulling their, huh? what little hair they have <laughs> left out of them. I know. And I, and love I think it. you say that because you want to irritate people and you don't realize that your kind are not. Oh, my kind? You, kind. you people, you people, <laughs> you, people. <laughs> you people are not uh, the kind of people we believe in right now. You know, you uh, never believed in us before. Yeah, but the problem, you know, you, whatever happened to compassion, Phil? What weren't we a compassion? compassion? Weren't we a compassionate country? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to that breathe free. Huh? That was a poem. That wasn't the law. Yeah, who wrote it? Law. Who People wrote it? Who wrote it? Quick, who wrote it? Uh, I don't know. Emma Lazarus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jewish guy. No, no, Emma, Emma, a woman. Emma, yeah. Emma Lazarus, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. So your parents didn't come through Ellis Island or, or, or yeah, they did. get dropped off in Manhattan? Uh, no, they, uh, they ended up in Brooklyn, but uh, they, uh, they came through Ellis Island, and they um, 
change their name. You know, when they got off the boat, mm -hmm. uh, our name was originally M I E R, mm -hmm. and uh, they guy wrote down M E Y E R, and my great grandfather, I guess, said thank you very much, <laughs> and, and walked through the pearly gates. Do you know where the term kike came from? Uh, no, is that a you know like a German? Uh, no, uh, well, well, it's kind of from a German word. The chalk mark they would put on you, mm -hmm. meaning that I guess you could either come in or you were okay or whatever, was referred to as a keikel. And huh. then, that, then people started calling people who, who wore those as they were kikes. Okay. Well, it, it, now that mark, did that mean that they didn't have an infectious disease? I don't know what it meant. You know, uh, I don't think we were very good at infectious diseases back in the day. You know, well, what we were looking you know, out for is, uh, let's see here, smallpox and, uh, I don't know, a couple other uh, things. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they had a few things. I, well, I think my great-great-grandparents came over in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, the Russia via Austria via England via... There was no Ellis Island then, though. Uh well, uh, Ellis Island was only in service, only in service for about seventeen years. Maybe I may be wrong on that. Uh, now, my um, my great my grandfather was born in the probably eighteen nineties. He died in nineteen thirty three at the age of forty two. Mm -hmm. So that uh, I would, and he had a. Uh, he had a sister, and I think the sister was a little older. So that, that would have put them in the 1880s, 1890s. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure they went through Ellis Island. Well, I don't, I'm don't. i trying to remember when Ellis Island started. I could look it up here. Well, yeah. yeah. I could just look it up. Ellis Island. Uh, Ellis Island. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Ellis Island. Uh uh, new museum, Statue of Liberty, Edmund Ellis Island Foundation. Uh, well, Ellis here Island it is. Established, established January 1st, 19, 1892. And then it was built in uh, 1900. The hospital oh. was built in 1911. And that doesn't say how long they were there. Oh, till 1924. So it's kind of from 1892 to 1924. But it, it really wasn't built. The main building wasn't built till 1900, and the hospital not till 1911. Were they were they running uh, uh, people through there yeah, in 1892? Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's probably uh, you know when they came Some over. Some things you didn't know: the architectural style was Renaissance revival. Didn't that, know that. It's actually a pretty beautiful building. Is that uh, egg and dart? You know, you know what egg and dart is, right? Uh, but is that a, a department store downtown? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> in Cincinnati. Uh, the the um, uh, if you look at the top of uh, of of a room, mm -hmm. uh, it'll have a, a design uh, that'll that'll run around, and you'll see like little round eggs and little darts. Uh, that's a very popular uh, trim. Uh, the, and you probably have that in your I, apartment. I think I have it somewhere in this apartment. Yeah, it's like yeah. The, in the corners, that little round oval thing. Yeah. Uh, the round oval thing might be a grotesque. Uh, you, you know, there, uh, if you look at the outside no, of buildings. No, it, 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 let's clear this up. It's not grotesque. You're grotesque. Well, no, it, it, there's um, there's uh, the the little statues that spew water from the sides of buildings are uh are uh, uh what are, what do they call those now all of a sudden sprites sprites no no they're not sprites they uh they're, they're like a cherub maybe in it and it'll spew water mm -hmm. uh out of it and then uh, grotesques are the same thing but just uh, solid believe it or not i we, i i remember when i was a kid Gargoyles. Oh, gargoyles. Gargoyles. Oh, gargoyles. Oh, okay. Right. You know, when I was a kid, they we had a fountain in this community center. This I can't remember what it was a community center. It was kind of like a, 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 a neighborhood center. 
and in the center of the courtyard was this fountain. And on the fountain was this naked cherub yeah. with water coming out of his penis. That's in uh, Brussels. Yeah. 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 It, had, it had water coming out of its penis. And I went, I always yeah, thought that, that was a little unusual when I was a kid, you know. Well, have you been to Brussels? No. Uh, in, the, in the town square, there is a little peeing boy. Same same kind of really? uh, oh, okay. same kind of thing, but uh, 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 let's see. Gargoyles are grotesques, but grotesques are not gargoyles. That's how you remember the uh, thing because oh, okay. gargoyles spew the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's your your art one B class for today. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Are you are you are you running around proud with your passport now that you have uh, the power? To, uh, to enter places that other people can't? Well, I don't have... Uh, there, there's no places that are using them yet, actually. Mm -hmm. But we have this. Hold on a second. Oh, G, G. Gordon Liddy died. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe my picture of him will be worth uh, more. I, I have no idea. But wait a minute. Hold on a second. This is a New York State wallet. You see this? Yeah. Uh-huh. And if I push this, this comes up, and that's my uh, that's my passport on my phone. Oh, no, that's Carol Dota's tits flashing. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, no, I I can't see. It's just a white thing. Hmm. It's just a white thing. As uh, no, it, no, it is. It's not a white thing. Oh, now you pull it back. I can see. Oh, something. I see. I was going in the wrong. That's the wrong I direction. Think this one is yours. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I see it. Oh, it's like a QR code. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's uh, I, I. You go online and you say what date you got your shot and who you are, and a few other questions, and then it sends this to your to your uh, 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 app. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it is uh, now I'm all red because of that. Well, no, you no a little bit. Who knows? Anyway, uh, uh, you can claim American Indian then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, hold on a second, I'm trying to get myself... Oh, there we go, okay. And my, co my uh, color changed on one of my things. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what we have, and it, it's, uh, uh, it's actually pretty good because what it does is it, it, it uh, sends it to your phone and says, okay, we looked at our records, and yes, you got your shot. Now you yeah. could say, okay, but you know you have that card, and the card is fine, but I think this would probably be more important than the card because you could forge the card. Well, you probably forge that too, but No, you can't forge that because it has to be sent by the by the state yeah. to your phone saying that it has a record of you having gotten your full set of shots. Yeah. Well, if uh your governor, he'll send it to anybody, any of his friends. They don't even have to get the shot. That, you know. Uh so Where did you get that notion? Well, you know, what they're saying now yeah, what is saying that now, he, yeah. mm -hmm. he got privilege for his yeah. family and, and, and his and friends. There's a good reason for that. He got privilege for his family because those were people he comes in contact with, and they didn't want the governor to get sick. So he, uh, he had, and these were just tests. These weren't shots. These were tests. Yeah, but nobody else could get them. No, everybody, other people could get them too. But Not at the time. But usually they were hospital workers initially, but he was getting them because they had to make sure he was okay. I mean, he's yeah. the governor of the state. And so the people around him, like his mother and his daughter, uh, daughters, I, I think had access to getting the tests. But that was important because they were also living with him. Oh, you know, you, you mentioned didn't, his you didn't, daughter. Now, do you, do you understand why he needed to get those those uh, those tests he, he those people could have been kept away from him just like the people in the nursing homes but you know you mentioned his daughter and i remember uh several months ago he sent his daughter's boyfriend who was on his protection uh, why, why what it, why are you doing all these things to him it, he, he why had, because he's a piece of garbage no the boyfriend had himself sent to another no dude. no 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 the story came out that the boyfriend uh, offered to go to another position because there was something wrong with him guarding the person he was fucking. Okay? 
Well, hey, Patty Hearst, uh, her her boyfriend married her, and he was banging her. No, after, but, but you know, he was, he was high, a yes, but, but, but uh, he, 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 uh, her father wasn't the governor of New York anyway. Uh, uh, he, uh, he was probably more powerful. He was not fond of the boyfriend. He used to kid about him all the time on the air. But you know. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, the boyfriend's well, in, you're just, in you're some just frozen living, tundra. You're going into every stupid rumor that's running around. Like the latest one, you have, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Gloria Allred's come in to advocate for this woman who said, here comes here comes Cuomo. She's I think her house burnt down or it was flooded or something, right? Uh, and yeah. he comes over to visit her as, a, I guess, an op a photo op. Yeah. And in order to be nurturing, he hugs her and kisses her on both her cheeks. You know, just to go there, there, dear girl, you know, everything's going to be fine. That is was now, it oh, she was very uncomfortable with that. He didn't stick her, his finger anywhere. He didn't touch her tit. He didn't do anything. Tongue? Hmm? Didn't he tongue her? I no, saw the no, video. No, he hugged her. the video. It, no, it looked no, like tongue no, was no, all no. the way down the throat. No, no. That was maximum tongue. His tongue's bigger than his nose. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just absolutely absurd. Uh, so number nine. Plus his numbers in, in New York are still high, you know, so. Oh, New Yorkers would vote for Adolf Hitler if he was a Democrat. Matter well, fact, there are he, other Democrats that are going to be primaried, you know, uh, but uh, but his popularity is over 50 percent. OK, uh, you know. Hey, we'll see. Uh, a lot of people are, are down on him. Uh, Newsom, for instance, uh, uh, he uh, if he gets recalled, they said that he cannot put himself on the ticket. So if the recall goes through, Newsom is gone. And uh, the guy, one of the guys that is a Republican that they think can win mm -hmm. was the um, uh, he was Trump's. Um, uh, guy to Germany, what, what's his name? Uh, gay guy, Gr Grissom, or uh, uh, and, he, and he was an ambassador. Uh, was an ambassador either to Germany or the UN for a while. Uh, you, you know who he was? He was a, he's a good guy. He was he was one of Trump's guys. Yeah. Then he couldn't possibly be a good guy. Ah, you, so you, you you wouldn't you wouldn't give credit where credit is due. Well, anyway, he seems to be very popular. And if he decided to run for governor, uh, I got a feeling he could win, and he'd probably do a good job. Probably, yeah, probably. And listen, when are you people out in California going to learn about these recalls? Every time somebody runs and wins for governor, what are you going to do? Recall them? Yeah. I mean, it, it, what? <laughs> you know, that's ridiculous. Well, uh, you know, uh, They've only done it twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it was also done in Nebraska, I think, or South Dakota. Yeah. Uh, th those are the only gubernatorial recalls that uh, have ever taken place. Yeah. Let me see here. I'm trying to remember uh, who there's somebody uh, has been one of one of Trump's people has been. Is, it looks like the DOJ is going to charge him for having sex with a 17 year old. Oh, that's uh, Matt. Um, Matt the, uh, he's yeah. from Florida. Uh, Matt Gant, not Gantz. Um, Gang, yeah, yeah, I know. Who, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he says that it's totally untrue. Oh, well, so does, uh, so does Cuomo. And, uh, he <laughs> says that, uh, they're trying to extort money. I see. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. And, and so does Cuomo says those things. Too. And, uh, the, the guy's yeah. father w wore a wire supposedly. Mm. Uh, and, uh, I don't think this guy from the DOJ is going to be there much longer. From the DOJ is going to be there much longer because of this thing with. I bet this Matt, whatever his name is, answer. Yeah, um, it gives up his post any pretty soon. I bet he does. I don't think I so. He, I bet he does. Yeah. Well, uh, the the claim to fame was that it was a seventeen year old and that he flew her to uh, different locations uh, for dress. Uh, but uh, he he said he can support that he was never in those locations as the uh, accusation states. Well, and you believe him? Of course. <laughs> He's a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you believe him? Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, okay. Uh, I want to know 
what's going on uh, with uh, our president. Is he is he gonna is he gonna make it another few months? You know, he's uh, he he had a press conference, mm-hmm. and I'm sure you thought his press conference was wonderful, right? I thought it was fine. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he his memory is worse than mine. Can I can I please mention that this guy has only been in office for six weeks? Six weeks too long. You know, I mean, come on. Are we going to do this to everybody who runs for president? You know, aren't we like, going to give them a certain grace period? I think we gave Trump more of a grace period than we gave him. No, no. Trump got nothing. Uh, he, he, as soon as he, uh, came down the escalator, they were on his case. Well, no, but they, he wasn't, he wasn't president yet. I'm saying this guy's been president for like six, seven weeks. And already the New York post is going, oh, a Biden is doing a terrible job as president. What do you mean? To begin with, look at all the people that have been inoculated as a result of, of, of Biden. I think that was a result of Trump. Oh, it was but- a result of Trump. It was a result of Trump we still wouldn't have needles in people's arms. Well, all of those vaccines were prepaid. They were prepaid. Uh, Trump they were prepaid, but, but the Biden administration had a hard time finding them and accounting for them. Well, Trump hid them in the closet. Yeah, but the point is that, that you know, if nothing more, Biden has saved millions of lives, m- literally millions of lives in the short time he's been in office. Well... Uh, did you, and by the way, did you get money from the government? Hmm? Did you get money from the government? You know, I did. Well, then how come you don't like Biden? Uh, I I not only got money from the government because it was based on 2019 and my net taxes, because I'm a subchapter S, was under the, the amount, I would assume. Either that or they're going to want it back. It's gross taxes. It's gross taxes. No, gross taxes. Well, my... My income is over 112. I don't understand how they gave that to me. Well, I don't either. Oh, well, uh, I, I also did a couple of other things. Today, mm-hmm. I, I waited to the very last minute, mm-hmm. but there was a, um, a coronavirus uh, grant uh, available for the city of Concord businesses. So I said, you know, I was going to pass on doing it because I, I didn't actually need it. And then I said, you know, that's a stupid thing. It's available to me. Do it. So today I sat down at the computer. I filled out all the things I had to fill out. Hmm. And I'll get $15,000. Hmm. And, uh, and I don't even have to pay it back. And uh, then yeah. I also called my bank. And the second round of PPP, hmm. which... I qualify for, but I didn't. I didn't take it. Uh, the last day you could uh, yeah. put in for it was today. Yeah, or tomorrow. Yeah, but the bank said that if it isn't in by the twenty fourth, you couldn't. Uh, you couldn't put it in. So I called the bank and they said, "Well, just wait another week because at two o'clock this afternoon, Eastern time, mm-hmm. they passed a, another extension." Uh, or they're going to pass another extension for PPP. So, and you would, and you don't like Biden. No. What does this man have to do to get your faith? Well, he put a needle in your arm. Okay, put a needle in your arm. He, he's putting money. Like I mean, he's putting money in your pocket. What do you hate about this guy? Uh, you see this hat? Yeah, right. The NRA shot themselves in the foot. They they're going bankrupt because of their own doing. Uh, they're going bankrupt, I think, be, uh, because of what uh, they were in New York, and uh, New York was suing them right and left. Yeah, and and uh, so they had to and uh, winning and winning. Yeah, well, now they've moved to Texas. Uh, it, it's they're just going to add a number two to the hat. It'll be NRA two. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know they'll continue to do what they do. And, you know, the, the, the government will get all their assets, all these hats without the two. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I've got some people waiting to come on here. Do you want to say hello to them for a quick second before you go? Not really. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like Charlie and Brian. Oh, hello, Charlie well, and hold Brian. On, hold on a second. I'll just admit them, and then you, I'll get rid of you in just a moment. You don't have to stick around. But, yeah. you know, you, you might know, as- Brian was in Concord this weekend, and do you think he came by? 
hey, Brian, you know, where were where you? You were in Concord this weekend. Yes. And, uh, you know, you didn't have five minutes for old Phil. You know? <laughs> I would have even bought the coffee. <laughs> yeah, I was with some friends, and then, yeah, we, we ended up getting out of there. So, Yeah. Did you win a prize? No, there's no prizes. No? It's a remembrance for our friend's mother. So, yeah, he's a really good painter. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Well, well any, anyway, hey, Phil. And, uh, Charlie, it's a pleasure to see you and John. Uh, anyway, you guys enjoy your show. And uh, we'll see you I'm, next I'm, week. I will see you next week, and I'll stick pins in the little doll of Biden. Okay, and then maybe they'll take back Come their on. money. Maybe they'll take back their you. money. <laughs> and you know, but I'll I'll buy that doll with the uh, with the um, PPP money that I get. Okay, well, let me get rid of you <laughs> here. People can see I'm getting Thank rid you. of you here. Sofa, I hit fire. remove, and yeah. we get rid of them. Congratulations! There we go. There, well, Thank I thought you. we got rid of you. Okay, there we go. Here's uh. And let me see here. Jeff Stein is coming on. Oh, remove Phil. See that? See the sign that says remove Phil? I go uh, uh, remove Phil. Okay. Anyway. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to report. Don't report. I just got rid of him. That was all. Anyway. Anyway. Hey, hello. Uh, hello, uh, Jeff. Hello. Hi. And, and what is that? Is that you're you using your, your what? Your disappears. Huh? Yep. That's our famous gene expert with one of our cartridges. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Your audio still sucks, you know. I, I don't know what it is. No, I think I'm just going through this laptop or the camera now, or the, the laptop camera earlier, and I need to get a speaker for this. I'm waiting for it to come in. Yeah. Or so, again, get yourself a headset, maybe. That would yeah. be good, too. Uh, so you can get rid of that background, right? That's just... Uh, I had it for a meeting I was in. Yeah, oh, you had it for a meeting you were in. Yeah, I was taking lessons from uh, Andrew Deutsch. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> now, wait yeah, a minute. Was, Hold on a second. Where, where, where? We actually have a video that talks about all this stuff. About wait, I'm looking for... Oh, here it is. Here it is. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me go grab that from your uh, from your this your over here. Let me. Oh wait a minute, you're over there. Uh, let me grab that. <laughs> there we go. I have it now. You <laughs> see. <clears throat> so, uh, isn't that amazing? Uh, what they we can do with Zoom now? Uh, yeah. Here, let me give it back to you. Okay, you ready? You ready? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Wait a minute. Here, here. There you go. <laughs> there we go. You see? Uh, <laughs> I'll run the test tomorrow when I go to work, okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Man, I tell you, I don't know what it is. These lights are so bright lately. Let me see if I can turn them oh, down a little bit. They're just getting a little too... Uh, 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 okay, here comes Robert Natali. Here we go. Uh, and hello to Robert as well. Uh, uh, Robert, uh, I, I, I went to your website, by the way, uh, because oh, I, <laughs> I went to your website uh, <laughs> mainly because I wanted to, uh, let me just turn this down a little bit. There we go. I was hacked. Hmm? I yeah. Well, because I got I got a thing that said uh, Robert wants to be wants me to make him a friend, and I went. Well, I think he is a friend. Yeah. Don't do that. No. Yes. But yeah. then, so then I went over to your page without do without, and I couldn't find anywhere that you had asked to be a friend. Okay. No. So it, I went I to hacked. your page and it said you were a hack. Yeah. Yeah. What on Facebook? Yeah. 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 I stay away from that fucking shit, man. No way. Well, no, I, I mean, you get, I get a I lot. I don't go on often. I get messages from Facebook saying, oh, you have just won a prize from Amazon and oh. and things like that. Oh, oh yeah. Minute. Look, by the way, I forgot to get rid of uh, Phil Meyer here. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, I have to get rid of Phil Meyer, the name Phil Meyer. It's up there for too long. <laughs> we don't. We don't want it up for too long. 
any longer than it has to be. There we go. Okay. Where By the I... way, so Matt Gates, his name is pronounced Gates. Yeah. Well, yeah. Two well, things. Two things are true. Mm -hmm. Number one, he's according to Axios, he's already told confidants that he's not running for re-election and is going to get a job <clears> at <throat> Newsmax. So yeah. oh, he he must know the heat's on. Yeah. And number two, have you ever seen a picture of this guy? Mm. If you have, yeah. he might be the only human being that mm. looks like both Beavis and Butthead at the same time. <laughs> and Butthead. <laughs> You've got to see a picture of this guy. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I can show people a picture of him. Let me see here. Here, here he is. Hold on a second. Let me I go to my... Like Bob Boy. Let me go to my computer. Here we go. There he is, folks. He looks like Beavis and Butthead. Come on. He looks like both Beavis and Butthead. Who, Matt yeah. Gate? Yeah. Matt Gate. Yeah. Hmm. Check out the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. What are we talking about? Yeah. But we're talking about Matt Gates, who oh. who rapes young girls now. That's what he does. Oh, yeah. He looks like Bob's big boy. Who remembers that? Huh? Bob's big boy? Oh, I yeah. remember Bob's big boy. That's a California thing. Yeah. 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 I stole him one time that when I was in high school. Oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. I stole it from the store and took it to my high school. <laughs> hmm. He stole what? Bob's big boy. The statue. There he is. You, st you <laughs> stole <laughs> hamburger. Yep. Uh, you stole you the statue. That? Were you in Long Beach, California? No, Sunnyvale. Oh well, their head office was in Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah. So you must have drove down there and picked up a statue and came back. No, they had a restaurant in Sunnyvale. They had them all over here. Yeah. I know. I know. That's they had one here too. They go out of business, I think. They weren't bad. Hamburgers yeah. were good. They have one in Downey still. Down in LA. Do they? Yeah. Yep. They have they had one in Long Beach a couple week a couple of years ago when I was down there. Really? Well, anyway, Matt Gates has been uh, they, they, supposedly the DOJ is looking into him having sex with a seventeen year old. Yeah. yeah. Probably did. And transporting her across state lines. Across state lines. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. good. That's, that's good, too. That, if he didn't take her across state lines, the feds wouldn't be after him. It'd be a, a state thing. Right. If you take right. her across state, state lines, then you're... All he'd have to worry about is a father with a gun. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I noticed you're reading something there, Robert, which means you're I've preparing... Actually, you're preparing... Actually, for our entertainment, I, I jotted down some things I noticed in the news today. The things you noticed in the news today. Yeah. Okay. Um, for example, if you listen to the defense of Officer Chauvin, you've got to realize they've got nothing because they spent all day trying to impugn the, uh, the credibility of a, a, an EMT who happened to be walking by as the <laughs> George Floyd thing happened. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they were trying to impugn her reputation, which gave me to believe this is what they're reduced to, which leads me to believe if, they, if his defense attorneys get him an innocent verdict, I'm going to hire them the next time Jeff and I steal a car. Okay. <laughs> because... <laughs> This guy will get anybody off for any crime. Well, you know, I didn't watch very much of it because uh, it has been irritating me. Let me let me bring something up here. This is always very unpopular whenever I bring it up. But when I first worked in New York, first time I worked in New York City, they had me sit down with lawyers at the station. So, okay, you're going to do a talk show. Here's what you should know about the laws here in New York. And one of the things they had was a law that you could not on the air, try a case right. on the air, okay? In other words, uh, if, if we couldn't uh, suddenly discuss a case and say, well, I think he's guilty. Well, I don't think he's guilty. You, you just couldn't, tr once it was, a person was indicted, he was indicted, and then you just let the law take its course. That's gone out the window. I don't know what happened to that. But it always made sense to me because it always seemed to go along with the presumption of innocence. 
okay, <clears throat> yes. which we have to presume, even in the case yes. of this officer and in this particular case. Now, I can think whatever I want about Chauvin and whether he murdered George Floyd or not, and if I were to tell you personally, I would you would be very happy with the side I take, okay? Um, but what I don't like is when I tune into MSNBC and they're now discussing the trial that they've just seen and how good, how great the defense was and how horrible, I mean, how great the, uh, the uh, prosecutor was. The prosecutor couldn't even pronounce Chauvin's name correctly. <laughs> Okay, he kept correct pr sp pronouncing it wrong all day long. Okay, um, but they kept saying what a wonderful job he was doing, what a lousy job the defense was doing, and saying, "Oh, this is not going to go, go good for Chauvin." And, and I'm thinking, you're trying this case on the air, and and I find that pitiful. I find that absolutely disgusting. And MSNBC should be ashamed of themselves. Now, I don't know that other outfits weren't doing the same thing, that over at Fox, they weren't defending Chauvin, you know. And over at uh, MSN, you know, at CNN, they were, they were doing the same thing MSNBC was doing. But it's just wrong. What you do is, okay, you want to show the trial? Show the trial, but don't comment on it. Don't comment on who's doing the best job of what, you know. Uh, because a lot of these people are going to go home tonight, they're going to turn on their TV set, and they're going to see your coverage. And that's going to prejudice the jury. Nobody's telling them they can't watch TV when they go home. You know? So I, I just think that, that these, these, what's going on, I don't think in the light of this, that Chauvin can get himself a fair trial because of what's going on in the media. And the way, you know, I don't think you could find an unprejudiced jury in anywhere in this country. Uh, I don't know if you agree or disagree with me, but I just, you know, I just find it, it bothers me, okay, because I believe that you are innocent until proven guilty. I believe that too, but yeah. I think the part that you're missing maybe is... Mm -hmm that the reason why it's going to be almost impossible for him to get a fair trial mm -hmm. might simply be because the evidence is so obviously stacked against well, him. But let that I be... Agree let it with let, the presumption let, of okay. innocence. But, I really do. But, but let it... let and it should let, get a fair yeah, trial. But let the trial rest on the evidence, okay? Yeah, and I don't, don't see... And don't let it rest on a public that is outside protesting, hmm. yelling for this guy's blood... You, that's not the reason I, why you vote against him if you're in the jury. You vote against him because the preponderance of the evidence shows that this guy, that, uh, you know, George Floyd was murdered by Chauvin. I watched MSNBC all afternoon, mm -hmm. and I didn't come away with the same feeling you did. In fact, they spent most of the time explaining why it was that a lot of the stuff they were bringing out was kind of dull. Chuck Rosenberg was doing an excellent job of explaining they have to establish that the crime happened in Hennepin County mm -hmm. so that there's standing and jurisdiction. Right, right. They, they had to identify who the witnesses were and what standing they had. Mm -hmm. So I think MSNBC did a fairly good job of explaining what it was the lawyers were trying to accomplish I think Al Sharpton was the only voice I heard during the course of the day that criticized the defense standing on weak ground. But I didn't see that as a criticism. Mm -hmm. I think he saw that as a as an overall comment on their case. Yeah, but if you got somebody we don't have uh, okay. much else to okay. fall back Let's on. Let's say you got somebody other than Sharpton. You got say somebody who is pro very pro police, who doesn't exactly see it that way. You fine. know, Bring then, him on. you know, he, he maybe feels that the defense is doing a fine job. I hear the defense was doing a lousy job, but let's say you could probably find some. But that side is not being heard on MSNBC. And the fact is that this is not a trial that you are engaging in. This is watching a trial that you're engaged in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and again, I didn't see 
I didn't see them trying the case on the air, and I watched. Well, I watched. I watched Mitchell. Uh, 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 what's her name? Angela Mitchell. What's her name? Andrea. Uh, Andrea. Andrea. Andrea, Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, Andrea Mitchell. I watched Andrea Mitchell and the people she had on, and they were sitting there literally Monday morning quarterbacking the thing. And I, th I, mm -hmm. I looked at Marjorie and I said, I know how you feel about this trial. I know how I feel about this trial. But isn't there something wrong with the way they're reporting it? And she said, yeah, they are kind of stacking the cards here. Mm -hmm. you know. I mean, this guy is supposed to be able to go into a courtroom and then have his case presented how well or how badly and rise and fall on a, a jury that hasn't been polluted. But when, okay. you, when that very jury is driving in or coming in in, in front of that uh, courthouse, and there are all these people out there saying, hang uh, Chauvin, and you know, they're protesting and all of that, how do they, how do they become, um, uh, 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 how can we call it? Uh, unbiased. <coughs> unbiased. I, I just, you know, I just think that we need to somehow, uh, maybe this thing shouldn't have been tried in Minneapolis to begin with, because I don't think he could get a fair trial in Minneapolis at this point. And for a change of venue. He can't a get a fair trial anywhere in the United States. Well, I, that's, that's the other question, you know. Yeah. I mean, can he get a completely, uh, and then, then the other question is, well, do you want jurors who never heard of this thing? You know, you want somebody so stupid people been? and unaware that they don't yeah. know this thing happened. They've been living under a bridge, yeah. apparently. Yeah. And, I mean, let's face it, uh, I could not be a juror in Minneapolis because by watching television, I'm a witness to the crime. Sort of. Not sort of. You are, in today's media, you're a witness to the crime. Did you, did you see the guy with his knee on... On uh, George Floyd's neck for nine minutes. Yep, you did, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I missed that in the media. I saw the the the, the picture, the momentary picture, but I didn't see. No, it I I saw they oh, went one place. On um, one place uh, that oh, I, I that I, I saw it, they it. actually ran the whole thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the officer's guilty or not. I'm just because I just haven't followed it enough, but. When somebody says they're a witness to something because they saw it on TV, we know that things can be changed around to make it look like Donald Trump is the greatest president and, of the world. And you know, the thing is, they can't, it, it, the, the, the defense here has an almost impossible job. Would you not agree? I mean, to begin yep. with, here you have this evidence that we're all witness to. Okay. Which was kind of my point all along, is that if they get this guy off, you you got to hand it to him. You really do. Yeah, well, but there are some other circumstances, mitigating circumstances, which haven't been brought up yet because he is not, his side has not presented their case. Mm. And one of the things they're going to bring up, and it's not going to make him too popular doing it, is that they're going to claim that he didn't, that the, the, the coroner's report is not going to say he died from strangulation. They're going to say they say he died from a heart complication, from a heart attack. And an overdose. Uh, and they're going to say that he had drugs in his, he had drugs in his system, and uh, uh, he uh, uh, had complicating, uh, compromising medical conditions. So then it's not murder. I mean, it, it may be his manslaughter. You know, but it's certainly not murder. Well, here's here was a place where NBC criticized, and, and I think MSNBC was right to criticize. The defense tried to make the point at one point today that Officer Chauvin was under assault, and yet the guy did the entire nine minutes with his hand in his pocket. Now, when is the last time you've ever heard of a situation where a person felt under assault and yet had one hand in his pocket. Well, that just makes look, no look, sense look, you at see, all. I don't want to get into an area where we're trying this here, okay? No, 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 and I'm yeah, not. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying uh, yeah, that I, I that was something they criticized as oh. weak. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, who knows why he had his hand in his pocket? That never made well, much well, sense I'm, to me. I'm not sure he had his hand in his pocket because he had he a did. black glove on, and he had his. He might have just had his hand 
at his side and and you couldn't it looked like his hand was in his pocket because he had a black glove on and you know in the video in his pocket I, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, because the defense brought that up they were asking did you see him with his hand in his pocket to see did, did, uh, to elicit somebody saying yeah i saw you know his hand in his pocket and then the defense is going to pull out look at his hand was never in his pocket we've got a different view it was a black glove i don't know i'm just speculating you know what i mean yeah but it's coming to the point i guess the the overall point i was trying to make mm -hmm. is that the defense seems like they're grasping at straws you know like they're grasping at small things whereas if they mm -hmm. had heavy duty evidence that supported their defense that you would be hearing more of those instead of trying to impugn you know the reputation of this young lady that came forward mm -hmm. which i thought was like you know the old expression if you have the facts on your side argue the facts if you have the law on your side, argue the law. If you have neither on your side, jump up and down and bang the table. Well, and I, look, look, to begin with. Uh, that's I, what it I, seemed the, like uh, to me. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, they're always going to look bad. Go, you know, somebody who is a defense attorney. He's been hired as a defense attorney. He hasn't been hired as, as an offense attorney. His job is to try and get this guy off. I respect that. Okay. All right. So given that that's his job. OK, um, uh, he's going to take anything he can. And, and, and I got to tell you, I mean, yeah, he's got a he's got a uphill battle with this case because you've got video of this thing happening and you've got people yelling, hey, get your get your your knee off of him. Uh, he can't breathe. The, uh, you have other people. The EMT, I think, jumped in there and said, don't do that. He didn't listen to him. You know, you can. It's a very hard case for this defense attorney to defend, okay. Yep. Uh, uh, and and short of copying a plea, uh, the way he's going to get his guy off maybe is by giving a decent defense and then trying to also try and create reversible errors in the trial so they can either have another trial or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they, I think this lawyer. It's not that he's a bad lawyer. I think he's just got an uphill case, you know? Oh, absolutely. I'm yeah. saying that all along, and I'll tell you what his job and, and is. And by the way, he's got, he's got to defend him because he has a right to a defense. Absolutely. Nobody's, yeah. Nobody stands behind that more and, than I And do. I'll bet you, I'll, you I'll, bet you th I'll bet you this lawyer, if they find out where he lives, gets death threats. Oh, he might. Yeah, oh, he might. and he shouldn't yeah, he because he is, he is doing what is a lawyer he is supposed to do. You know what his job is? His job is to sow doubt in the mind of one juror. Yeah. If he can sow doubt in the mind of one juror, he can get a hung jury. Okay. That's, you know, frankly, that's his job. Yeah. Did you see any of this, Charlie, today? Charlie? No, I don't watch with Charlie. Huh? Charlie? No. You, oh, you didn't. I didn't see it. No. Oh, you didn't watch it at all. Did you not want to watch it or what? No. Why? Nope. I get too mad. I get too angry. My blood pressure will go up. Yeah. 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 As well, it should, Charlie. You know. I mean, this was a this was a horrible situation that happened, but. The guy, he still has to have his time in court. Yes, uh, Brian's got his hand up. Can you hear me? No, oh, wait a minute. There we go. Him. Right there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was coming home around, thank you. I was coming home around 12 or 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. and I listen to CNN. Sometimes I listen to CNN on the way home, mm -hmm. and I was crying a little bit. I mean, it was heart-wrenching to hear that tape. And just, and you know, I'm listening on the radio and I could hear it just for so long and you hear the people talking and saying this stuff. I mean, it was just heartbreaking for me. Well, you know, I mean, number one, um, okay, let me say this. What this cop did was terrible, okay? Uh, and, and what I saw did not look right to me. It looked pretty terrible, okay? And that that could happen in America bothers me. But... I still give this guy the benefit of the doubt that he's 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 due a day in court. He's due to the, the best offense that can be uh, handled against for him, uh, and um, 
uh, you know, he has that right. And I, I don't care what you think about his guilt or innocence. Uh, he has the right to a fair trial. And I just don't see where he can get one in that atmosphere. Okay. Yes, uh, John. I got it. Why, they had him in the back of the uh, car. Why did they take him out? I didn't understand that. I, look, none of it makes any sense. Okay? The only sense it makes is that it was a, a, at least one cop who had his macho on. Okay? and Because the other cops were kind of like, one of them was just a new cop. He, he was just learning from this guy. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I mean... It, it, was he going to tell him to stop? I think he asked him to stop at one point, supposedly. You know, that's why he was never charged. He asked him to stop, but he had no authority. He was the new kid on the block. You know, uh, you know what it was like to be the new kid on the block, right, uh, Al? Alan? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'm like the the uh, knee on the neck thing. Uh, I think that 99 percent of the cops would never do that, especially when you got two other cops standing there. To help assist if the guy's like crazy on drugs or something. I mean, why weren't they helping restrain the guy? Uh, you know, putting your knee on somebody's neck, even for a few seconds, you could snap the guy's spine or his neck. Uh, it's just, you know, it's well, what I'm saying is, is you, 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 I'm, I'm talking about a time when you were the new kid on the block, right? You, you went out with some shut. guy who's been a cop for the last 20 years, right? right he, you keep your mouth shut. He's showing exactly. And if he did that, you hmm. might have a tendency not to do anything about it because you're deferring to him as the person who's your, you know. I, I think this guy's guilty of manslaughter, this mm -hmm. cop. Uh, I don't know if they're if they're going to be able to prove that it was a racial move, uh, with all the the heat that's going on uh, towards cops uh, uh, wrongfully doing things to blacks. And don't misunderstand me. I think that that's definitely out there. Um, I but, don't think I don't think this kind of procedure would have been done if George Floyd was white. We I, don't know. I think there might have been a little more restraint involved. Uh, we don't know. But we don't know, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know. Uh, so. yeah, yes, Jeff. Jeff. I, I didn't watch it on TV, but I listened to it. I was in the car, mm -hmm. and I listened to it. I think it was from CNN. And it was, it was very interesting to hear what was going on, particularly when you're listening to the attorney trying to ask every single question, particularly about that, that lady who was there. Um, but, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a very, very difficult position for anybody to listen to this stuff. Because there was all kind, kinds of people taking photographs, adding audios, having things to say, like uh, let the guy breathe, uh, measure to see if his heart is working. You know, is he dead? Is he alive? There was a, <laughs> there was too much information. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing the thing is that that. Uh, um, what, what uh, to begin with, what people are seeing now is the prosecution. Everything is going to be done to show how bad the situation was. Sure. The defense will come along and try and change that, uh, that attitude. Yeah. I think the defense has got a pretty difficult job, as you say. If they, if they could win this case, then you know, hire them if you, next time you steal a car. Yeah, you know. Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff's, Jeff's Jeff. got to grab these. Guys. There is the go-to lawyers. Yes, Alan. I, I like how Robert points in a direction. Somebody's got their hand up in another direction. On the on, yeah, I think I think Zoom mixes us up because I came in last, but I'm right next to Alex. Mm -hmm. You're at the bottom of my screen tonight, Robert, and it's black on either side of you. <laughs> uh, see you know? the way I'm seeing it. I'm next to Alex. But, yeah, I, I'm I mean, next to Alex. The way I'm well, uh, oh, the way well, I see it, Brian's on one side of me, okay, Charlie's on the other this side. This way and that way, I'm trying to figure out what you're really doing. If you're but, now, people are going to see me do this, but I hear I can do this. Supposedly, I can do this. Yeah, see, 
I can move. There we go. I just I just moved uh, at least on my screen. I moved Alan to the center and Robert oh, well, to the bottom. You. The trouble is, I look like John Larkin. Yeah. Alex is to my right, which is the first time Alex has been to the right of anyone. Well, but you see, you can move you can move yourself anywhere you want to on the screen by simply putting Dragon. your mouse over it and then dragging it to another part of the screen. So that's why it's different with everybody. Okay. Two last things about this case that I thought of today. Yeah. Number one, at some point, you're going to have a verdict. And I thought to myself, woe be all of us if, he, if he's found innocent. You know, God only knows what can happen in the streets. And number two, I thought, if he's found guilty, where do you put this, this son of a bitch in jail? You know, yeah. where, oh, yeah. where well, can you safely... You know, put this guy where he won't be dead in, in 24 hours. I mean, really? Well, because he's a police officer, he's got to be put in protective custody no matter where he goes, no matter what he does. And that usually means federal prison. And does that mean, let's say let's say he's given, what can he get in the, under this? Uh, 40 years in prison, let's say? I don't know. It depends on the laws where it's at. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's, uh, not, it's definitely not murder. Okay, let's say uh, let, it, let's say it it's forty. Like let's say it's forty years in prison. Uh, where do you put him in protective custody for the next forty years? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, really. Uh, you know what? Once he's convicted, the the state or the county or whoever, in this case, I would imagine the state uh, has the the obligation to protect the guy, and realizing that the guy's a police officer. Um, and and is at high risk of being injured or killed in prison, you put the guy in protective custody. And how and historically, how has that worked out? You know, an awful lot of people have been found hanging from their cell. Yeah, that's you know, true. Under suspicious circumstances called suicide. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. You're right. But, you know, I'm just saying. So I, I don't disagree with you, Robert. Did you, you didn't watch any of this, right, Brian? I just listened to it on the way home. Yeah. And what was your takeaway? <clears throat> yeah. Like I said, I, I just, it was just got wrenching to, to listen to it and to hear all the detail and, and the videos that they have. I mean, it must be just, you know. Well, I mean, it, 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 we, we yeah. all have seen the videos. I mean, there are a yeah. lot of videos and, and, and there's no, you know, there's no crime that goes un, uh, Photograph this these days. Like we just had a thing here in New York with an Asian lady, an uh, Asian lady, who was attacked by some guy, uh, and they've got a shot from the outside from somebody who was shooting it with their camera, and they got a shot from the inside of the uh, of the building, uh, sh looking out. So they've got actually you could do a you know two shot movie out of this thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, in this case, <clears throat> we not only had the one video we all know of, the one with him with his, his, his uh, uh, knee on his, on his neck, we also have the, the videos from across the street and the security cameras and so on. So there's a lot of coverage of this. And there's no question as to what went on. But now we have to apply motive to the way in which it was handled. And then, who knows? You know, I, I, we would all tend to think that the motive here was racist, no question about it. You know, mm -hmm. and um, uh, but uh, it, it's still. Uh, I still wish that the the, the prosecutor mm -hmm. would pronounce Chauvin's name correctly. Uh, they call him oh. Chauvin or something like that. You know, and I'm going at least. You know, if the guy's on trial. For his not his life, but for his uh, freedom, uh, the least you could do is pronounce his name correctly. You know. Well, one other one other news item you guys may have missed, which is on my list here, is that that ship in the Suez Canal. Oh yes. It, yeah. Because it blocked so many things, it's been named the the SS Mitch McConnell. I don't know if you guys <laughs> know that. <laughs> I love it. I'll tell you what I what I uh, who was it? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel said that last week he was off for a week, so he took his he and his wife and his kids on a cruise down the Suez Canal. <laughs> you know uh, uh, how uh, 
<laughs> How much is that going to cost the company that owns that ship? Wow, I wow. mean, it was costing, they Big estimate. savings in gas. No, a billion dollars a day. Yeah. And how many wow. days was this happening? <clears throat> oh. Mm-hmm. Plus, there, there were was, live animals involved. There were live animals involved, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and how many ships were in line waiting to get through? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But do you know what that ship was carrying mostly? No, what? Ready for this? IKEA products. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. Why didn't they just pull it out and put them together? You know, like the ship could have been <laughs> emptied that way. Now here's somebody named Turd Ferguson. I have no idea who Turd Ferguson is. Yeah, I don't trust that on. one. What? So John Larkin's already on. Yeah, yeah. John is already here. <laughs> well, let's see who Turd Ferguson might be. Okay, and then I will get rid of him as soon as there's a problem. Let's see here. Here comes Turd Ferguson. There we go. There he is. Oh, he- hello. Uh, is your name actually... This is somebody we've never seen before. Is your name actually Turd Ferguson, or is that just a? Uh, what is your name? Oh. Yeah, it's actually my name. What? Yeah, of course it's not my name, Alex. Oh, okay. Where, where are you calling from? Fort St. John, BC. Oh, okay, in British Columbia. We get. Oh, yeah, you bet. Yeah, yeah, we get Canadians calling. How, how are you? How are you doing? Not so bad. I wanted to call the other night when you're asking about. Uh, you had a gun problem there in the states, or people killing each other. Yeah, they, we have a few there. people killing other people here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I was gonna bring it up there that in Canada, there you had to uh, apply. You have to take a two-day course, mm-hmm. and it costs you two hundred and fifty bucks. What and how to kill somebody? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, uh, uh, they call it a PAL. It's a possession and acquisition license. I see. So okay. You, yeah, you, you take two day course to learn not to shoot yourself or other people there. And, well, uh, that's fine, but the question yeah, is, yeah. there is a big disparity in the amount of people that get killed by guns in the United States, and the amount of people that get killed by guns in Canada. Yeah. And so the question always becomes, yes. why that difference? I mean, and it per capita, there it, per per one hundred people, uh, the same amount of guns or whatever. Uh, oh, that's, that's the question you were asking Trucker Steve, right? But I, I don't think he, he lives in a more urban area. Like, he lives in a high volume, like Toronto. It's like you're Detroit. Mm-hmm. I live up in northern Canada. Mm-hmm. And the only reason to have a, 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 a weapon up here is to protect yourself from wildlife or to go hunting. Yeah. Right? So maybe that's it, right? Well, I think but, that... You know, I, what I was saying the other day is I can I can understand why people who live in a rural area might want to have a gun because there are a lot of critters, you know, that are dangerous uh, critters, uh, bears and thing, you know, mountain lions and things like that. You've got that where you live, right? Well, yeah, but in the States, you're allowed to have, you know, like uh, AR-15s or... Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's like in Texas, I think you have fully automatic weapons. But up here, you can have hunting rifles, and uh, and now, now our, our new our new administration, you can't you cannot own an AR-15 up in Canada. Okay. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, my point is that it takes you a, a two-day course, then you fill out a four-page application, and you send to the RCMP, mm-hmm. and it lists uh, you have to have references. It does a background check, and if you uh, or if you're with a, in a relationship, you have to have the woman's name or the person's name. Mm-hmm. And if you ended a relationship in the last five years, they need to know that person's name to make sure that you're not an idiot and that you're not getting the gun to get revenge, right? So, right. No, it, it, well, wait a minute. I, if they, if they, I, go, if they I, go to get a reference from somebody you used to go with, and let's well, say you no, didn't but, break up on decent terms... Wouldn't they yeah, say, oh, that guy's dangerous. Don't give him a gun. Well, no, worthless. absolutely. I mean, you, you, if you just broke up with somebody and, and you want to buy a gun there, I'd, I'd immediately suspect you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, no, so my point is that I, I, I went camping in the Yukon over the summer and I didn't have a gun. I wasn't legally allowed to carry a gun, so all I had was pepper spray and... Uh, like an air horn, right, to scare off any bears that wanted to eat me, right? 
Yeah. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to buy a gun. So I had to apply and do a two day course, pay 250 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I did it in September. And then I got my permit mm -hmm. a month ago. So that's four months in Canada. Wow. Is yeah, that, well, can you imagine an American waiting that long? No. 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 Oh, no. Well, Ten days if you're lucky. Yeah. Now, what else would you use to fend off a bear? Do you use bear spray? Yeah, you'd use a, something. First of all, you'd never take any food into your tent. But if you're stupid nope. enough to do that, a, a air horn <laughs> would scare it off. And bear spray would. But Yeah, well, bear spray bear is also spray. very good. Bear spray is also very good if you're attacking the Capitol building. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> very effective. Yeah, they say it's actually more effective than a firearm, right? Yeah, because in a when you're panicking and you're getting eaten from the asshole up by a bear, <laughs> chance of you shooting it with your gun is slim and none. But firing off pepper spray is they say it's more effective. Right? And, and do the bears get repelled by it? I mean, is it really that good? Yeah, no, we actually, uh, I, I do, I work in uh in remote camps and we the cooks are supplied with bear spray and and the bears will come around and they actually got mm -hmm. youtube videos of it they'll shoot them off right but after a while they get immune to it right mm -hmm. but initially it'll scare them off will air horns scare them off too oh yeah really for sure yeah yeah, you bet. yeah. so 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 uh, the difference between pepper spray and a gun pepper spray you spray and if the wind is coming back at you, now not only the bear got it, yeah. but you got it. And you can't yeah, absolutely. Yourself. And a, gun, it, it, a gun doesn't usually, the bullet doesn't usually return, even, <laughs> if, it, even if the wind's blowing at you. So, you have a good point, Al. Yeah. And I, if I'm you, against a bear, I will take a gun any day. Um, yeah. I, 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 I think bears no, are. Move your head. Move your head. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Turd, is, wait a minute, Mr. Ferguson, would you would yeah. you turn turn your camera up so your full face is in there? Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's much better. And you can there lean you back a little bit because you're a little. Sorry, Alan. Yeah, but you're a trained cop, so you're used to killing people, right? So bears, nothing. We just shoot at the bear. No, we don't use guns. We put our knees mad. on people's neck. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I went I went camping with a friend once, and he told me um, if we see a bear, run like hell. And I said. I thought you weren't able to outrun a bear. And he said, I don't have to outrun a bear. I got to outrun you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know. Bears, are uh, bears. I hear, are very dangerous. Yeah. You oh, know. absolutely. Their claws, well, you know, big bear, big polar bear, or, yeah. you know, uh, brown bear or something, they're nine foot high when they're standing on their hind legs. Weigh a thousand pounds, almost as much as me, but their claws—they could swipe yeah. a claw and, and rip your face off. You know, just one swipe and you're done. And they are big into garbage. I've seen videos of them literally yeah. taking these, you know, these garbage bins and turning them over, or or pulling in them into the forest place. with them. I mean, they just—they're insane when it comes to scavenging for food. Well, a healthy great. bear, you have no worries about. It's a sick bear, something that's not able to kill normally. Mm -hmm. and it's looking for the easiest prey, which is a human. Yeah. That's, but, you know, if you're out camping and you have a, there's an American woman that got murdered up on the Alaska Highway. She was at a hot spring, and it was a bear that was 100 pounds underweight that had a broken jaw mm -hmm. and couldn't hunt, and it ate her slowly. Mm -hmm. Ate her yeah. slowly? Well, yeah, it, it, that's how animals do it in the wild. They, they eat from the asshole up, right? And they don't care if you're dead or not. What do you mean the asshole up? I mean, that isn't real, that's, is it? That's what no. they do. No. It's, they uh, start with the meaty part. <laughs> yep. They'll just when start you eating. Go. You know, when you might be... Right? Yeah, when you're running, your ass is the first thing they're going to grab. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, you know, he's right, though, because the ass has a lot of meat on it. Some I mean, I, I you know, I'm not not that I'm I'm an expert, yeah, uh, you but you know, I mean, <laughs> there's no. Take the chicken leg, right, and you grab that meat, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, I just wanted to let you know how hard it is to get a gun permit in Canada, right? So, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. It, well, it I mean, it's very good. By the way, what is your first name, so I don't have to call you it's Turd? Jeff. 
Jeff. Jeff. It's not turd. Bring it down. <laughs> you, already got a, you already got a Jeff, sir, right? So. Oh, so that's why you put turd there. Yeah. Uh, well, we can change uh, Jeff's name to turd and give you yeah. Jeff. Oh, no. You know, but you can actually, or you, uh, can, or you can put Jeff up there slash not a car thief. Yeah, we call this Jeff Bugsy. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever watched Norm Macdonald on Saturday Night Live. He was playing Burt Reynolds on uh, uh, <coughs> what the hell was that uh, Alex Trebek's game show there? Oh yeah, 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 yeah exactly. That, that's yeah. the name he gave himself, yeah. Church Ferguson. Oh really? Oh okay. <laughs> All right. There's a name you haven't used yet, John. Yeah. Go <laughs> ahead, oh, yeah, John. Tomorrow, John will tell us he died today. Well, <laughs> you see, when we get phony, when we get names like that, I get suspicious that I'm going to hit the button and all of a sudden I'm going to get a video of two people having sex, you know, <laughs> because we have what we call uh, uh, Zoom bombers. And Zoom has warned me that I shouldn't make my address known. And I'm going... Why okay. not? You know, I mean, I want people to call me. Why shouldn't they make it known? Oh, but if you make it public and you put it in a public thing like a tweet or whatever, uh, so anybody can call. Yeah, but they go into this, you know, this <laughs> waiting room. But then when I, and usually the people go into a waiting room who want to Zoom bomb you, do it with a Spanish name. Why? I have no idea. You know. Mm -hmm. Turd Ferguson, that sounds Spanish. Turd Ferguson. <laughs> so anyway, ole. Uh, 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 Charlie Wallace, who is our Dr. Doom on this program. Did anybody have a sign for that somewhere? Wait, give me a second. Give me a second. I'm oh, coming. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. I'm coming. Do, do, I'm do, coming. Do it I'm fast. Coming. Do it fast. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm slow today. That's what she said. Uh, Dr. Doom is uh, uh, Charlie Wallace, and uh, you should give us our latest report because the numbers are going up, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, we exceeded 550,000 dead Americans today. So, 500. almost 551,000. Wow. How many today? Wow. How many today total? 1,038 today. And, you know, yeah. we were, for a while, we were below 1,000. <clears throat> yeah. Now, how's, how's so it going in Canada? pretty consistent for the last week. It's pretty consistent. How's it in Canada for you guys? I mean, what? You know, I, up where I live, it's we really have been hit. I mean, we have big population centers, that, like in Vancouver. You'll have people that fly up here to work construction jobs, and they'll bring it up here, and then they'll... They'll test positive, and then they have to isolate in their work camps. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I, today, the, uh, I guess the government of Canada said anybody that uh, wants AstraZeneca, you cannot have it if you're under 55. Oh, really? So oh, okay. They'll give it to all the oldsters, and, but yeah. nobody under 55 can have because the AstraZeneca virus. Or the we've just vaccine. gone down to 30, I think, thirty. the age is 30 here in New York. Am I right about that, Robert? I don't know. What is it? In, you've gotten your shot already, right, uh, Robert? Yes, I've had both. You've had both, yeah. And you had which shot? Moderna? Pfizer. Pfizer. Okay. I'm a Moderna guy myself. Yeah. Or sorry. The AstraZeneca is from England, right? Yeah. So. What, what, have you been. Sh did you get yours yet, Brian? Yeah, both. Oh, both. really? Everybody's oh, and you had what? Here. Moderna? Team Pfizer. Team Pfizer. Oh, I'm. I'm. And and how about you, uh, Charlie? Pfizer or Moderna? Charlie. Moderna. Uh, Moderna. Two Moderna shots. I think maybe Charlie's getting our signal a little late or something. <laughs> how about you, John Larkin? Have you gotten your shot yet? I haven't. Uh, I haven't got him because it's. Um, I'm 63, so it was only 65 and up. I but it, uh, after the first of April. Wow. After the 1st of April, it's going to be 50, so I'll get my shot after the 1st. Well, guess what? We're just about uh, one day away from April 1st, so yep. go get yours. April full day, I'll go get it. Yeah, and Alan, have you had yours? Yeah, I had mine before you. I had mine in February. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had mine in February. John, if I were you, I would be signing up three weeks ago for your shot. 
Mm-hmm. Because yes, when I they tried, but you it, can't. You can't sign up until yeah, the yeah. first. Well, you're not going to be getting yours on the first. Maybe the first of July. But oh, well, you know what? Um, <laughs> you can go. You can go to the uh, like the pharmacies, like uh, like Walgreens or uh, or CVC, and uh, you can just walk into any of those. They're pretty easy. I mean, that's what somebody told me. I don't know. Yeah, the, oh. the, the, um, the, uh, uh, the CVC. Yeah, the, the pharmacies are carrying it now, pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and here in, Ma- here in New York, it goes to 30, and then I think it's going down lower later on in the month, I think, to 16 and over. Dr. So, uh, County Andrew's uh, 29. He's going to be okay. What? Who's this? Andrew, uh, my young son. Yeah. 29. Oh, they, and how, how much have they lowered it in, uh, in Connecticut? I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Problem it, is my my granddaughter uh, got COVID mm-hmm. just recently. Oh boy. And she's a a basketball player. Mm. Mm. Is she okay though? She was a little sick for a couple of days. Yeah. Young people can yeah. walk it off pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's, it, they find that young people are not doing as well now. Right. They find the sports. Sports. What, what were you saying, uh, Brian? The, the sports. They were, I forget, uh, Brian Gumble or something, they were talking about sports. A huge percentage of the kids are getting it through sports, and a lot of these coaches for football and all these things are trying. They don't care. They're trying to get all the kids together because they're opportunities for you know getting into college and all these mm. things. They're trying. You know, they say it's a risk, yeah. but the kids are getting it through sports. Yeah, but uh, supposedly the 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 kids uh, getting it who are like ten and above are are quite uh, a lot of them are getting it uh, where they weren't getting it before. Robert wrote something that I had thought I had made a joke of, and I I was amazed that great minds think alike. And that is, don't you remember the days when uh, sports uh, figures uh, were disqualified for testing positive for drugs? <laughs> yeah, the good old days. The good yeah. old days. Yeah, you know. Um, but it. Uh, uh, do you have a question of the day? By the way, we've only got about three, four minutes left. But something quick. Yeah, that we could kind of finish. Have you ever fallen asleep in a theater? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Have you ever fallen asleep? Uh, do you remember what that. the movie was, Brian? No, too many times. Oh, too many times. I see. You know, cause, cause the kids want to go to a movie, and I don't really care or not. And then about like half hour into it, I get like a 15, 20 minute little nap. Charlie, how about you? Yeah. Do yeah, you... I fall asleep in movies that I want to see. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, I lose 10 minutes because I fell asleep. <laughs> how about you, John Larkin? I've fallen asleep and slept right through the movie, and everybody <laughs> left, and I woke up and I was in an empty theater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! How about you, Alan? Um, you know I don't go to movies that often. I think the last one was The Life and Times of Alex Bennett. I see. Okay. Well, no, no, no yeah. I'm just kidding. I, I, it's been years since I've been to a theater, and so me too. Yeah, I. I I, I don't know if I've ever fallen asleep in a theater. How about you, Jeff? Fall asleep? I'm sure I f- of course, you're I an old fart. Asleep. You fell asleep in a movie theater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. I probably f- remember uh, one time I fell asleep in your in your show. Uh, yeah. oh, <laughs> yes. I'm not the only one. Okay, that's good. Oh. How about you, Robert? You fell asleep in a movie? I, no, I don't go to movies often at all. And, and mo- I go to Brooklyn. Broadway more than I go to movies, and I've okay. never fallen asleep. In a I fall enough. asleep in Broadway shows, and I'll tell you why: the lighting makes me drowsy. Oh wow! Uh, basically, wow. in plays, musicals are noisy, so they keep me awake. But if it's a play, it's just that lighting. You know, the lighting in plays—it's kind of muted lighting. It's not heavy lighting, yeah. and I just get drowsy and I fall asleep. You know, wow. and I remember falling asleep. Terribly at a theater in England. I went to a, a, a West Side show in England and uh, in London, and I just I dozed through most of the mo- most of the show. And it was a very dull play anyway. So I'm glad I slept through it. 
How, how about you? Have you ever uh, fallen asleep during a movie, uh, Mr. Ferguson? No, never have, Alex. No, okay. I think... I've never been able to get through those Ken Burns Civil War documentaries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as I hear that violin, man, I go right to sleep. I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you when I fell, I fell asleep this week during 60 Minutes. I yeah. just found it so boring that <laughs> I fell asleep during it. And it was the number one show of the week, by the way. Wow. You know, so I, I don't know why I fell asleep, but I, I, hey, I dozed hey, off. something happened to me today. I wonder if you guys would be concerned if you were me. I, I was sitting in a room, and my wife was in the next room, and suddenly she yelled out, Honey, have you ever had a, a sharp knife-like pain in your side as if somebody was sticking a pin in a voodoo doll. And I yelled back, no. And a minute later, she yelled, how about now? <laughs> I don't know if I should be concerned. <laughs> good one. Very uh, good. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I um, uh, uh, lately I fall asleep a lot watching television. It, it's just, you know... Is that after you smoke? No, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I just, you know, it, you usually it's it's game? usually it's if I took a tr drug the night before to go to sleep, and about th four, five o'clock in the afternoon, six o'clock in the afternoon, it has an afterlife, and all of a sudden I get drowsy just watching TV. I'm trying to keep my eyes open. I'm trying to watch drive. it, huh? Go for a drive. Go for a drive. <laughs> you don't have a car. I don't have a car been a long oh, okay. time since i owned a car now you jeff live where, where, uh, 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 jeff, jeff 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 ferguson Island. jeff ferguson where do you live now again in canada Fort St. John, BC. where is it Bridge northern columbia. british columbia you okay. wouldn't know where it is what's i'm sure yeah what's it called north St. john bc yeah Fort I, what okay go to vancouver on the map yeah yeah look about fucking 700 miles north mm -hmm. yeah. wow. how did you wind up there because i imagine that's the middle it's not exactly the middle of nowhere but you can see it from there they have yeah. a good view from well, there they can like see most Russia. people you're, you're born like i was born like 100 miles away from where i'm actually living wow can, okay can you, see, can you see sarah palin's house <laughs> you know, I, was in the Yukon. I wanted to go to alaska last summer and yeah i would have been able to see wasilla from Dawson City, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, How do you know Alex? Wh what? How do you know Alex? Alex. He probably just... Yeah. Probably just... Because I used to listen to... Uh, I used to subject my... Uh, the people that I worked with. I drove the truck. And I'd listen to Sirius and Alex Bennett on yeah. the radio. See? See? And everybody loved him, right? And yeah. I've, I, I, I used to be a big shot. I, I told no, you. No, no. You, hey, listen, uh, this that's it for now. We've run out of time. But, uh, Brian, nice having you here. And Charlie Wallace, always nice having you here. Uh, John Larkin, great having you here. Alan, Jeff, Robert, and now Kurt Ferguson. Or Jeff Ferguson. Jeff, will you call us again? This has been terrific. You know, you know how to do it. You know how to do it. Yep. And um, we're probably in the same time zone almost. And, oh, uh, thanks for all the content. There, I, I I download you and I listen to you when I run my machine all day. Right? Yeah. Got eight hours to kill, so I listen to. Podcasts. Well, if you've got an hour and a half to kill, call us program again. We love having Absolutely. you. Okay, make sure you do that. Anyway, yeah, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye to you as well. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me uh, kind of get rid of them. Listen, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection, which is a program that's like this one. He has a citizen panel, and he does it on Skype, and you can do it by calling GabNet Live on Skype. In the meantime, I'm going to take the uh, next, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, 22 hours off and be right back, or 22 and a half hours off and be back here. There's a sports show on tomorrow night uh, at... Uh, 8.30, maybe 9 o'clock. I don't know when he's putting it up now uh, with uh, the franchise MC, and then I'll be here tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, wear a mask out there and stay safe. <laughs>